Now with a segment on sleep is our reporter, Laura Windsor. Adequate sleep is especially important for children as it directly affects their mental and physical development. We spoke with Dr. Angelique Gallion of Children's Hospital of Orange County to learn about sleep problems in children and what parents need to know. Common pediatric sleep issues often depend on the age of the child. As many sleepy parents can tell you, even though a six-month-old should be able to sleep through the night, they might wake up multiple times. This often comes from the fact that they're often given milk, rocked, or even cuddled to sleep. Throughout the night, as they naturally go through their sleep cycles and wake up to check in on their environment, they're looking for all those things again. Children do learn very quickly. Many children do learn how to go to sleep and stay asleep within a few days. The trick is here is that you are going to give them guided support, just like we do for every other aspect. We don't put a baby down and expect them to walk on their own, and sleep is no different. Many times you can put the baby to sleep in their own bed or crib and then give them intervals in which you keep giving them support. You just don't have to pick them up, rock them, and cuddle them. Again, we're helping them learn to do this just like any other skill. Toddlers are learning to set limits in every aspect of their life, and sleep is no different. In a toddler, this can often present asking for one more glass of water, one more story, or the inevitable one more trip to the potty. The secret is, many times this starts much earlier with the bedtime routine. Children need to have the same environment at night that they go to sleep in and stay asleep in. In general, you have to help children learn to go to sleep on their own. This is very much a skill like everything else. Teenagers are different from children in many ways, and again, their sleep is no different. Teenagers have a natural physiologic tendency to go to bed late and sleep late. That's sometimes called adolescent delayed sleep phase syndrome. Essentially, in addition to this natural physiologic drive to go to bed late, they have increasing social activities after school in evenings and increased extracurricular activities like sports and clubs. Unfortunately, many teenagers run into an issue where they still have to wake up early for the demands of the academic day. Some easy tips for parents to get their child sleeping a little bit earlier would be things like turning off the technology at least two hours prior to bedtime, not having any technology in the bedroom, even the cell phone, even if they argue. Technology has improved our lives in many ways, but it has also caused significant disruptions to our sleep. Specifically, the blue light that comes from television, cell phone, laptop, can be a potent stimulator of the brain's arousal or awake mechanism. So, using screens, even within an hour before bed, can make it difficult to initiate and maintain sleep. The other big trick for having them be consistent in their sleep schedules is a regular wake time, even on the weekends. Many teenagers are very resistant to this, but if they are motivated to improve or change their sleep, they can be very successful. Any vacation or break from the regular schedule can significantly disrupt sleep. The pediatric brain really likes regular schedules, so changing in naps, delaying bedtime, or change in wake time can cause significant sleep disruption. Some of the best strategies to get kids back to school or back to any routine are the same as you would have for keeping them on their routine, specifically being consistent. Regular nap times if they're still napping, regular sleep times, and regular wake times. Even though most pediatric sleep issues can be fixed with lifestyle modification or behavioral interventions, there are some times when it can be helpful to see a physician. Specifically, if you have concerns about your child breathing during sleep. For example, loud snoring or hearing them stop breathing, waking up gasping, those are times when you might want to see a physician. Unfortunately, children don't present with sleep deprivation the same way that adults do. Children will often present with symptoms of inattention, hyperactivity, or trouble doing the things that they should be able to do, specifically functioning at school. So, if your child is having trouble functioning at school, trouble with inattention, hyperactivity, or is so sleepy that they're falling asleep during those activities, like playing with their friends or at school, then it might be time to seek the help of a specialist. Remember, children require a consistent, relaxing bedtime routine, and new parents need to establish good sleep habits for their children so that everyone can get a good night's sleep. For the American Health Journal, I'm Laura Windsor.